Uh, my name is Mbali Mazibugo. I'm from KZN in Newcastle. The reason I'm here in Pretoria, I was working before. I started to be a student here in 2005, and then I ended up uh, finding work. I was working until the work was finished. So after the work was finished, I started to lose the place to stay. Started to stay all over with the friends, mixing myself with people who are smokers. And I smoke, I, I, I quit, I left Pretoria. After uh, 2020, after my parents passed away, I came back to Pretoria because all my family passed away in one, one year. I decided to come back in Pretoria to look for work, but I couldn't find anything. So I ended, I ended up in the streets and smoking again. Yeah, that's what happened. What did you study? I was doing sales and marketing management. Where? In uh, T TNC. TNC. Mm. And what were you working as? I was working as a lay counselor uh, in the clinics, and I had a chance to get a, a, a leadership in social development to work as a child in youth care worker. So unfortunately, I couldn't finish it. I didn't have a place to stay. So I couldn't be there on time. And the, the other thing, I used to be sick in the morning. I couldn't tell them that I'm a smoker. I've got a problem with smoking because I was scared. But they can label me everything that they would do in the, in the center or everything if this lost, I'm going to be the one who's going to be accountable out of it. So I couldn't tell them the truth that I'm a smoker. I ended up losing that uh, leadership. And the first time you became homeless, where were you staying? And uh, I was staying in the streets uh, there by Skuman, Skuman and, uh, and and Andres, Andres and Skuman, there by the streets in front of the police station. That's where we used to sleep. First where of all, I started to sleep in the other flat. There's an old flat around there called Garen. But it was not safe for me. I thought it was not safe because inside is dark and there is water. There was someone who fell in the water and passed, passed away. So I decided to move out and sleep in the street. There I was okay for the time being. This was the place I called home until I moved here. Um, last year, June. Last year, June. Yeah. And here, it's home. You don't have a child? I do have. I do have two boys there at home. How old are you? I'm 39. 39. Mm. And what do you smoke? I'm smoking uh, heroin and drug. You spike? Yes, I do. Who introduced you to, to smoking? It How was, did it happen the first time you started smoking this? It was friends. We started with ganja. We started smoking ganja. After I realized, it seems like when they smoke the, the heroin, they relax more and they forget about everything. It's when I started to try it and by not feeling weed anymore. I was not feeling weed anymore, it was too weak for me. So I started to, to upgrade my smoking habit. I started to take a, a heroin. I started to drug. They do drug, the rock is making you to be paranoid. So they told me, Witty, in order for you to calm down, you need to take a heroin. That's how I took the heroin, and I didn't know the, the uh, consequences of taking the, the heroin. It's how I started it. What was your scariest experience of staying in the streets? Yo, you can get raped. The car, because we are sleeping next next to the street, to the main road. The car maybe can drive off out of the road and drive on top of you guys. Yeah, that's what I was scared of. And you've never had a human trafficking? No, 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 no. I always make sure about that. Yes, I do have some guys who used to approach me, asking me if I can take the stuff from South Africa to Brazil or Brazil, wherever, but I told them, would know that one I cannot do. In such a way that, yes, I am a smoker, but I can't steal, luckily. Uh, and I never became a prostitute, because I've got a career. I didn't want to find myself maybe in jail, having the, the criminal record, because I still believe that one day I will quit and find myself where I can be straight. Mm. Your parents know you are 
as I told you, as I told you, they don't know. I don't have a family anymore. As I was telling you, in 2020, they all of them passed away of cancer. Yeah, it was jumping a month. Including, when I'm telling you about all of them, I'm, I'm, I mean all of them. My father's side, they were finished a long time ago. But my mother's side, including my sister, she's the one who started the way. And then after they follow each other, right now it's only us, the kids. They don't know. They know I'm in Pretoria. I'm looking for work, but they don't know I'm smoking now. And it's been the last time I was at home. It was the time we were burying my mom in 2020. And then it's when I left home, I come here. Since then, I never went back. My sister's daughter, she's the one who's with the kid. What I can tell them, what I can tell them, not to start, not to start, is not a, is not good at all. The thing that is gonna make you relax for the time being, after everything, after you relax for the time being, it's coming back. Everything is coming back. Every time is coming back. All the things that, the pain that you've got is becoming worse because you find yourself not having enough money to smoke. If you don't have someone to help you out, that is why they end up doing prostitution and stealing. So I can say they mustn't try it at all. They mustn't try. Instead, they can try to get help. If ever they were there, they put themselves already, they can start to find help around their rehabs. There is people to talk to. They must try to always to find people to talk to so that they can be far from these things. I never, that's what I want, that's what I'm looking for with all of my heart. If I can get a chance to get a rehab, I think I cannot go back to smoking. So you need rehab? Yes, please. You are my heart. <laughs> you are so great, sister. Mm. Thank you. You're so beautiful. Thanks. Thanks. And how do you how do you make a living? Luckily, I've got a boyfriend who's working as a as a taxi. They call it what? Lava Marshal. Yeah, he's the one who's providing for me. And and I don't have a phone. You know, as smokers, you can't keep a phone. You sell it in order to get something to smoke. That's how I I fail to to look for work or something. But yeah. He's the one who's providing for now. And um, how many do you smoke a day? A day. A day I can smoke six. Maybe. You mix? No, okay, the rock, maybe three a day. And then the, the heroin, six. Six times a day? Six bags, yeah. How, many, how much is it? It's 40 rand, 30 rand, 35 rand each, a bag. And then the rock is 60 rand. a lot of money, a lot of money. Mm. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you.